so the, one of the reasons, you know, I, I, I had you on, I mean, obviously I always uh, enjoy hanging out, but also uh, you did a, a stream for, uh, for Left Reckoning in which you uh, kind of briefly mentioned uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, the French philosopher, and, and mm-hmm. some of his thoughts about Marxism. And uh, like I said earlier in the show, that's a combination of, you know, once that interest has been expressed, I mean, that's just blood in the water at that point. That's a combination of guest and topic we can't not do on the show. That would be ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, so Forrest, do you have the uh, ContraPoints clip to set this up? On the one hand, we have Marxism, a fundamentally modernist worldview that theorizes the human condition in economic terms. On the other hand, we have postmodernism, a skeptical worldview that denies our capacity to know any universal truths about anything. On the face of it, it would seem these two ideas are not compatible. And there is an extensive history of dispute between them, with, for instance, the Marxist Sartre calling Foucault the last barricade the bourgeoisie can erect against Marx. And of course, as we all know, when Foucault died, Capitalism did and forever. <laughs> uh, Get me just... worked up over here to, to, before we get started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so that was in the context of uh, of, of Natalie debunking uh, Jordan Peterson's claim that postmodernism and Marxism are basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and which, uh, and you know, she's she's obviously having a little fun at uh, at Sartre's expense there at the uh, at the very end of it, uh, but it does give you uh, give you some sense of that of that conflict, right? So, uh, so I, I guess just to just to kind of set this you know set this up so we can at least sort of set the stage for this and and get the um, and and get some of the fundamentals in place, you know, before we uh, before we have to go to the post game. Uh, what's uh, like like what so. Sartre is, is is an existentialist. So so what is that, and and then how does his relationship to Marxism kind of fit in? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I should preface these things with, you know, I'm not unlike uh, my comrade on the other side here, a philosopher, a professor of philosophy, but as somebody who spent a good amount of time when I was at school studying philosophy, particularly because it basically allowed me to do uh, two majors in political theory, right? Because I, I was a double major in political theory in the political science department and uh, a major in philosophy with a specialization in political theory. <laughs> uh, so I just found a way to rig the system there. But um, yeah, I mean, existentialism means a lot of different things and there's a lot of people who are included in the movement. And when you just deal with Sartre as a thinker, um, sometimes it's better to just sort of limit yourself to him and his work. Right. Um, just because, yeah, it means, that, you know, uh, you know, his friend, uh, you know, his friend and then later like Nemesis Camus has like a very different conception of what this is, um, as it obviously, uh, you know, one of Sartre's uh, teachers, uh, you know, Heidegger um, obviously went in a completely other direction later in life. Um, but, you know, for Sartre and where it pertains to Marxism, the way I think the simplest way to, to uh, explain what existentialism is, is it's. I mean, there's the two like big dictates of of of, uh, of of Sartre, right? He says like man is condemned to be free, right, and that existence uh, precedes essence. And what he means by that is that if there is no God or order to the world in that sense, um, then we actually have to deal with the fact that we have you know this kind of radical freedom, right? That we aren't born with these kind of you know this essence in us. It's actually something that we create. Right. Um, so fundamentally, existentialism, especially the way that Sartre would you know, define it, it's a philosophy of freedom and it's very much focused on the individual, uh, which is why it can be a little bit of a difficult philosophy for some uh, to be able to merge with Marxism. And I don't think, uh, you know, just as a preface, um, we'll talk a little bit about why I've been interested in this question, um, primarily uh, Sartre's book. Um, in search of a method, which is a really interesting sort of criticism mm-hmm. of, of cr- like a loving, it's like a criticism from within of Marxism, specifically a historical Marxism in like 1960. Um, you know, this is when the, you know, trickles were starting to, to, you know, to reach out to the Western world about actually what Stalinism had meant, um, what this philosophy and political practice was in, uh, in actuality. Um, but we'll get all to that in just a second. Um, you know, so so for Sartre, it's a you know it's a question 
existentialism is a philosophy of freedom, but it's also a philosophy that's very much, um, you know, rooted in, in the individual. Um, and yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, I want to take just a minute to make sure everybody is following what you're saying there about uh, essence and, and existence, right? So uh, the, so existence just means what it always means, existing. And uh, essence means like the, uh, the, the point or the purpose, uh, the meaning, you know, of, of life. And so the essentialist view, which the most obvious form is like religious essentialism, that the meaning of your life comes from God, mm -hmm. uh, that you know God is giving you a certain purpose and maybe a free will about whether to accept or reject that purpose. But that's that's basically where it comes from. Uh, whereas, uh, so that's essentialism. Existentialism says that you don't have one that's that's built in, uh, waiting for you, uh, you know, or even waiting for you to freely choose whether to accept, you know, accept it or reject it. Uh, you can only get it by creating it through your own free choices. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always, I'm not going to play it on the stream because I've gotten incredibly paranoid about copyright because we've been burned so many times. But uh, uh, I always think if there's like a little 20 second clip that I like to play in class from uh, the TV show, Rick and Morty, where uh, where, where Rick has built this this little robot to uh, uh, to pass butter at the dinner table. And, uh, and But the robot is sentient and the robot says, what is my purpose? And Rick says, I have to pass butter. And then the robot just slumps. Oh my God! Right? You know that's that's, that's it, right? You know, so um, you know, existentialism says that even if there was a God, you know, you can't get your your purpose that way, right? You can only define it by your free choices. So uh, Marx, so uh, Sartre has this uh, this essay, "Existentialism as a Humanism," where he gives this example of, uh, and this is this is good too because it leads us back into the politics of. Uh, during World War II, you know, when the Germans were occupying uh, France, mm -hmm. uh, there's this uh, student who came to him for uh, for advice uh, and said that he was like really torn because on the one hand, uh, he felt that he had this patriotic obligation to join the resistance and help drop, you know, the free French forces maybe and, uh, and help drive the Nazis out of the country. Uh, and I think also because well, he had a brother who'd been killed by the Nazis, he felt the need to avenge. On the other hand, he was the sole support of his mother and he was really worried about what his mother had, what would happen to his mother without him. And he didn't know what to do. And Sartre didn't tell him anything useful, but he told him like, basically like, yeah, you know, figure it out. Right. Like that, like at Sartre's point with this example is that it's, there's no like pre-existing right answer. You know, he just sort of mm -hmm. has to find through his own choices. What's, what's most important to him. So as you say, this is very much about, uh, this is all very much taking place at the level of individual human lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Marxism uh, is, is a view that, you know, may not be incompatible with that. Sartre didn't ultimately think it was, but it's a, uh, but it's, it's a view that, that like Marxism, whatever else is, is on the most obvious level about this entirely different level of analysis. It's about, you know, social classes, economic systems, you know, collective, you know, struggle to, uh, to, to achieve a different economic system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, so how, how, how does Star Trek kind of try to, to, to navigate this? Because he, he does get very, you know, I mean, he's very, um, at various points in his life, right. He's sort of aligned with the, uh, the, the PCF, the French Communist Party, or very critical of it. But even when he's very critical of it, he's being very critical of it from like a distant Marxist perspective. So mm -hmm. I mean, how does he try to reconcile all of this. Um, absolutely. I just wanted to make like one more quick point uh, too about like this conception of freedom and how it relates to society. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he has a very you know inflammatory quote about freedom and, and the German occupation, the Nazi occupation of France, right? And he says, we were never, like something along the lines, like we were never freer than we were under occupation, right? right. And he's not just, I mean, he's obviously doing it for effect, but there's a really uh, critical point there to understand Sartre's kind of, uh, you know, uh, philosophy, um, which is that what he means by that is it made you have to decide every day, am I going to, stand in line, do what I'm told, you know, just act as if everything's normal, right? Or am I going to actively resist? And the freedom that Sartre means by that is obviously not political freedom and that you could do whatever. I mean, in a right. sense, th this is the thing that some people get really, some people get really worked about this point by Sartre. It's not, people think that Sartre's like encouraging you to always resist under any circumstances. 
um, you know, people think that that's what he means by that. He's actually not even making an argument about what you should or should not do as much as saying you need to be able to grapple with and wrestle with the fact that you have your own freedom, even if the consequences make you do a certain thing. Right. So like what I mean by that is like, you know, it, it might not be the best thing to run out under occupation and just go, f you know, fighting any Nazi that you see. Right. Because you probably get killed. But you can never forget that that's like an actual possibility that you actually do have this radical freedom and you make choices. That's like in the most extreme example. Right. When you're dealing with Nazi occupation, uh, you either are actively resisting or are you know just trying to live your life, um, keeping your head down. Another example of this, and this is why Marx starts to interact with socialism and communism as such an important philosophy of his time, is he really did not like how um, economic determinants affected people's uh, thinking about their own freedom, right? So people would say, oh, I can't do this because I don't have the money to do that. Or if I make this move, then I might lose my job, um, you know. And basically through that, um, people are forgetting their own freedom and their own potential in this sense, especially by treating capitalism, the system where you have to go into work and sell your labor for a predetermined amount of time, um, treating that as something natural and not as something that is a human made system, right? So like, these are the kind of on the individual level uh, where those like, so it's not just an individual's philosophy and in that it's like, I'm just sitting in a room and imagining the world around me as much as it, it's, it's saying like, there is like a, a, a focus on, you know, our own individual radical freedom here. And the consequences of that are extreme. And a lot of people spend a lot of time denying themselves uh, this like idea of, of, of freedom that they do have. And instead, you know, completely, you know, telling themselves that their lives are only determined by outside factors. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>